up. Um, I, I do believe that this is 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 the is actually could be a catalyst of change. Indeed. It's time that we people actually united now. And and the horrific story that's coming out tonight. I knew about the story, but listening to Anne has has touched my heart. And and only good can come out of this now. And uh, uh, have you enjoyed listening to to the interview with Anne? Has it? Uh, do you feel it's part? It's definitely powerful stuff, isn't it? It's, it's immensely powerful stuff. This, the, the, this is, I mean, the depths of which it goes, and it's global now. You know, the people are actually uniting under this banner, and I think it is, it's fantastic that the, there are brave people out there. You're heroes, guys. Thank you. Have you anything you would like to say to Robert with me in the studio? Yes, I'm, on bail. I'm sending you, Robert, lots and lots of love. And, hey, you could be MP and most probably bloody Prime Minister after this. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I don't want to get a bad name, you know, Jim. <laughs> oh, no. I tell you what, you've got, you would have the people look scrutinising every damn move you make after this lot. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you okay, for your support. Okay, it's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, this is the beginning of the fall. Yeah. I hope you're right, Jen, and we really appreciate your call. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. All right, bye. That was Jen. Thank you very much to Jen for that. If you want to get in touch with us here in the studio, uh, you can ring us now. The phone number is 0161 202 1677. That's 0161 202 1677. And thanks a lot to Jen for ringing in there. We really appreciate your words of support, and we're, it's always great just to know that you're out there listening and you're listening to what we're saying and listening to the story of Holly and Ivan and of Robert. Uh, Robert, just uh, getting into here, we want to, you want to talk about um, the Lord Advocate. Let's, let's break this down, the Lord Advocate of Scotland. Yes, indeed. Uh, now, the Lord Advocate of Scotland actually controls all criminal prosecutions in the country. She, perhaps along with the Justice Minister, really virtually control everything that happens in Scotland, certainly of a criminal nature. And Mrs. Angelini's role in this is pivotal, because she was formerly the Procurator Fiscal in Aberdeen. And for those who are perhaps not aware of it, the Procurator Fiscal is equivalent to the Crown Prosecution Service here in uh, England and Wales and Northern Ireland. And... Uh, when uh, I first brought this to the attention of the Scottish Government, I was told by um, a gentleman called Andrew McIntyre, head of uh, diversity and victims at the Crown Office in Edinburgh, uh, that um, Mrs Angelini had no knowledge of this case, and in fact it wasn't even in situ at the time when it was brought to the police's attention. Now, it was brought to the police's attention, certainly the second part that we know on the 25th of August 2000, but Mrs. Angelini actually became Procurator Fiscal on the 21st of July 2000, which is a matter of public record. So I told Mr. McIntyre that yes, she was in situ. Well, Mr. McIntyre was a little baffled by this and couldn't really understand why the, uh, I think, why he'd been told what he had been told by the, uh, the Lord Advocate. Uh, obviously, she was promoted to that, that uh, office uh, a few years ago. And um, he then said, oh, well, it must be some of the people who were uh, perhaps under her were dealing with the case. Well, I said, I find that very hard to believe, considering how awful the case is and how wide-ranging it is, that the, uh, the procurator fiscal herself should not be informed about it. Anyway, Mr. McIntyre said, well, that's all I can think of. However, we have some documents that show that uh, the Lord Advocate has lied and lied repeatedly to the Scottish people. I have a letter here dated the 27th of October uh, from Brian Adam MSP, who was uh, one of Anne's representatives at the time, written directly to Mrs Angelini asking her what progress she has made with the case and looks forward to hearing from her soon. Not only have I got that letter, but I have a letter much later uh, from the Procurator Fiscal's office. Here it is in front of me, Procurator Fiscal Elise Angelini on the heading of the letter. And this is dated the 12th of July 2001. And this very briefly is what she has to say. It was signed by one of her minions, but it's got her heading on. She's responsible for this letter. And it says, your client, Anne Elizabeth Mackey. And this is written to uh, Anne's uh, solicitor, Yvonne McKenna. And it says... Dennis Mackey. I confirm that no proceedings were taken in respect to those allegations. I am not aware of Holly being referred for a psychological assessment. 
I note the fresh complaints made by Holly against her brother, Greg Mackey. This complaint should be lodged with officers of Grampian Police for them to investigate. And that came from the Lord Advocate herself, or Procurator Piscal, as she was at the time, who claimed to have no knowledge of the case. Um, and that was way back in what year? That was, uh, the first letter was the 27th of October 2000. Yes, yeah, so and the letter this is, this is it was 10 12th years ago. 12th of July 2001. Yeah, so it was uh, 9, 10 years yes. ago that she definitely had knowledge of this case, sure. and still she has not made any official comment on this, has she? Well, well she has, apart from she's trying to speak, shut people up and yeah. uh, tell them that uh, if they, they'll get sued if they do say that she's conducting them, but it's quite clear she is involved in this, and this okay. is why the sheer terror of the Scottish Government in trying to, to, to put the lid on this terrible uh, story. We've got a caller on the line. Hello, you're on Manchester Radio Online. Hi, that's Alan for We are Tunes Classical. Yes, Alan, how are you doing? Thank you very much for uh, your touch. Not too touch. bad. Uh, how are you doing, Robert? Fine, thank you very much. Hi there. Uh, it was basically to say to you, um, we've been obviously trying to get the whole uh, Greg case out for a while now after seeing it at the Wake Up Call conference and we were in Glasgow at the newspapers and we did hand over a lot of evidence uh, regarding the case and they did take it seriously and took our phone numbers but we haven't heard too much but as we know things aren't that easy to get out in the, ma the mainstream media just now. Um, so what I was going to say is we were going to have a meet up on Thursday in Glasgow at 12 p.m. It's going to be on Buchanan Street, and we've joined up with a few other groups, and we're going to get as many people as we can there, um, exposing the Holly Greg case, and if by luck we can play the interview, um, if we can get your consent, or if it's legal in that case, to play it out loud in the middle of Glasgow, because also the mainstream media won't tell everyone about it, so I suppose it's up to us to put out the word. Uh, that's, one of, that's one of the best ideas I've ever heard in my whole life. It was terrific. Thank you very <laughs> much. And definitely you've got my permission. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure Ann and Holly, who's re it's ultimately Ann and Holly's decision, but uh, they, yeah. I can sh assure you that they'll be very happy for that to happen. Uh, I mean, I understand the legalese terms, and I mean, John Harris comes on about this, and there's a lot of aspects regarding it, but we know that they're trying to cover it up for their own kind of legalese language, but I'm not to I mean, the legal side of it, we're not too worried about it when we see it from obviously obvious our perspective, yeah. but um, we'll also conduct ourselves in a good manner and keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Alan. I, I will sure speak, to you, again. I'll speak to you again and I'll sort you out with uh, some of the, the audio from this show. It is being recorded and uh, we will have a podcast available online uh, for people to listen to. We've already got one online at the moment uh, and I will bring up the address very shortly. I, I uploaded it before the show. Uh, so I can tell you about it, and it is basically just the, the full uh, 30 minutes with Anne Gregg uh, in its entirety, or, well, what, what I've left in there. I had to cut some things out just for legal reasons, because Anne actually named every single person involved in this case, and that's, it's great that we've got that on the record, and I've got that on a few different computers all over the place, so no matter what happens, uh, that is a, a matter of record now, which no one will ever be able to destroy. Uh, but I will, I'll give you a shout-out, I'll give you the podcast address soon, and you'll be able to listen back to the, the full interview with Anne Gregg. And then also, separately, in maybe a day or two, we'll have this entire show again for the last hour and 40 minutes. Too loud in the studio there, sorry about that. And grind the faces of the poor. You're live on Manchester Radio Online, hello. Hi there. How you doing? What's I your name? Like, uh, I don't want to give out my name, because right. I know no some problem. things about this, okay? No problem. Um, the reason I'm calling is that um, I've known about this story a long time. And what do you make of this story? Uh, well, I, it's true. I know it's true because I've known um, the people involved, not Holly and her mum, but people that are uh, related to her. And I first heard this story, well, I think it was about eight years ago. And what, what, what do you think we can do about this, or what would you like to see done? Well, justice, obviously. Um, but I want to tell you a story. I was uh, in my hairdresser in Ferry Hill a few weeks ago, and uh, there was a girl that was working in the shop who um, got a letter at a salon. She'd been working in Aberdeen saying that the story about Anne in Holly. And I, the, the lady that was cutting my hair showed me the letter, and she didn't know that I knew about the story. But I was so pleased to see that Anne was able to get information out there because obviously at every attempt she's tried to get the story out she's been made out to be a liar and that she's, you know, a sort of head case. So I just wanted to phone and say that um, I support Anne and her family and I hope that they get justice. Thank you very much. Listen, are you on the, are you on the Facebook, group, uh, Facebook group page? No, I'm not. 
Uh, well, just just for listeners now, I have just actually uh, posted 30 minutes of the interview with Anne Gregg on that website. So if you're on Facebook, go to We Won't Allow the State to Cover Up the Holly Gregg Pedophile Scandal. And you have the group page there. There are 12,000 members on it. And at the very top, you will see a link that I have just posted this very second. And it is a podcast, 30 minutes with Anne Gregg. And finally, Anne and Holly's story is out and it is available now. You can listen to it online. And uh, I would appreciate that if everyone can go on there and spread that all around the world and let everyone hear Anne's story because the mainstream media have totally let us down on this one. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And I just think that they, they need as much support from everybody as possible and, and not being made out to be liars and that, you know, there has to be justice. I agree with you. Thank you very much for the call. You're welcome. No problem. Bye.